Hello and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name's Caleb. In today's episode, I'm going to build a remote start for my generator. The problem is, is that the generator is kind of far away from the house. It's all the way down a hill through a bunch of mud. If it's raining or muddy or snowy or wet, whatever, it's just not a pleasant journey. And I like to build stuff, so why not build something to do this for me? I was able to find a breakout cable for my generator. And what it does is it bypasses the front panel on the generator, which has a key to enable it and a push button to start it. The breakout cable's got four wires. Two of them are to enable, so you short those together and it enables the generator. The other two, you short them together momentarily and that starts the starter. And you know, in a few seconds, you release it and then the generator's running. To turn it off, all I have to do is release these two and then the generator's off. Pretty easy to do with a couple of relays. The idea is that I want to have controls in the house to do this. So I'm gonna use two Arduinos with Wi-Fi on them, one down at the generator and one up here in the house with the controls. But I also realized that I need to have a set of controls down by the generator because it bypasses the front panel. The key switch and the button don't work anymore. So I'm gonna build two identical units. One's up here, one's down there. The only difference is one of them has the relays built into it. So let's take a look at some of the parts and get to building. For the microcontroller, I decided to use the Arduino Nano IoT 33. It's got Wi-Fi, it's got plenty of I.O., and I've used them a bunch of times, very familiar with them, and it's a great choice for this microcontroller. For the displays, I'm going to use four-digit, seven-segment displays. These are the same ones that I used in the clock video I did a couple of years ago. They work really good. They've got all the decimal points that I'm going to need, and they're nice and bright, and they've got that nice flat black finish that I really like. To drive these, I'm going to use the Mac 7221 LED controller. I use this in that other project as well, and there's a good Arduino library for it, and it all just works great. And they're SPI, so I can just stack them up and have as many displays as I need. And of course, I'm gonna use my favorite ITW momentary switches that I've used in almost all of my projects in the past. I've got four of them, one for start and one for stop on each unit, as well as a rocker switch that's going to turn the displays off when I'm not at home. That'll just save a few watts while I'm not here. Got it mostly all out onto a breadboard here, and I just wanted to quickly take you through what's going on. Uh, there are two circuits. This one on this breadboard is the house circuit, the remote, and this one will be near the generator. It's got the two relays to control the generator. This is a start relay, which is just a momentary, and this is the enable relay, which will stay on as long as the generator's running. When this gets disabled, the generator stops running. There are three LEDs and a switch on this circuit. I will add it to this when I build out the boards for it. I just didn't think I needed to prototype it twice because I see it works on this one. So what we've got going is the IoT33 and these are Max 7221 LED controllers. This IC is controlling these two displays. And this display is how many watts are being generated by generator. This is how many watts are being generated on the PV system. And this is flips between voltage and state of charge. And that state of charge is just kind of calculated in software. It's not super accurate. I just wanted to have a little bit of a visual up at the house. So let's see if it all works. I put the switch in here and all this does is turn off the displays. I did that in case I'm not home it will save just a few watts while I'm not at home. And on the remote, the buttons work exactly the same on the remote or here. If I push this button, it'll send the signal out to MQTT. This will pick it up and turn both of these on. This one will stay on for a predetermined amount of time and then it'll shut off. That's the start function. This one turns on, it's enable. Let's push it, there we go. They both come on. 
Not pushing anything, automatically goes off, enable stays on. If I push the other button, which will be the stop button, it'll turn off the enable. Same thing on this side. Push start, turns off after that predetermined amount of time, and then we'll turn the system off. And that's pretty much the entirety of what's going on here. It just turns the generator on, turns it off, gives me a little display of what's going on. And it is afternoon. You can see I'm only making about 215 watts right now, but better than nothing. Let's do a really quick run through on the code here. So up here on the top, we're just declaring some of our objects, a bunch of global variables. We set up our buttons here, button objects. Down here in the MQTT area of the loop, it's going to check if it's connected. If not, it's gonna reconnect. That's just maintaining the connection indefinitely. Got a couple of ticks for the buttons. And this section right here, I'll explain in just a minute after we see what the buttons do. And this part here just flip flops back and forth between the voltage display and the state of charge display. So here's the handler for the start button. When we push the start button, it's going to start this timer over here, as well as publish these two variables to MQTT. When this timer gets set to the current milliseconds, this part of the loop sees that as timer is not equal to zero, starts a timer for the duration, the predetermined length of time that it holds the start on, and then it turns off the start in MQTT and that all gets handled down below. And on the button stop, here's the handler for that. It just sets both things to false. And here's the callbacks for MQTT. We get the PV yield, the watts from the photovoltaic, and assign that to a variable that we can use. We get the generator watts. Here's the handler part for the generator enable, and that's going to actually set the pins on the relays high or low. And here's the same for the stop. And down below, these are just a bunch of helper functions to help the whole thing run. This of course will all be on GitHub, so be sure to check the Element 14 community page for a link. Hi, I'm Derek, and this is DC to Daylight, where we explore the world of electronics in the realm of DC, audio frequencies, RF, and into the visible spectrum of light. Here we take electrical engineering topics out of the boring old textbook and bring them into life through demonstration and test. Sometimes we even build stuff, and if there's a way to test the concept at hand, we'll put it on a scope and measure it, and in doing so, hopefully bring it to daylight. So if that sounds like a good time to you, come hang out with me every couple weeks here at Element 14 Presents. All right, see you there.
And here we are, it is all done. It's kind of hard to film. I've got another camera down in the generator room in PAW. I can't film directly at the generator because the backlight would wash it completely out. So it's looking at the other unit here. And what we've got is the switch to turn off the displays. And two buttons, a couple of LEDs. This is gonna show generator watts. This is photovoltaic watts. And this is flipping between a state of charge here, 79%, and the battery voltage. So to turn it on, push the button, hold it for a second. The enable light comes on. That means that the relay came on for enable. Press it one more time, and it's gonna start up. Hopefully you'll be able to hear it on the other camera. Let's give it a second. It takes just a little bit for the inverters to pick up. And there we go. We've got wattage coming out of the generator. That's gonna slowly ramp up and it'll get to about 2,500, 2,700 watts, which is where I have it tuned to. Even though the generator can do like 7,000, I have it tuned down to that because it's just above idle. And to turn it off, push that button, hold it down for a second. And there it goes, turned off. But I need to run the generator today because it is so rainy. So let's turn it back on and I'll leave it for a couple of hours. So I'm only making 350 watts out of the solar array. That is all the features. It works. That's all we have for today. I'm really happy the way that this came out. It all works and I'm really happy that I don't have to walk down to the generator in the rain through the mud anymore to turn it off or turn it on. I'm a little bit bummed about not finding that stud when I was doing the house install. I used a stud finder and I tapped on the wall. It just didn't show up for me. The walls in this house aren't sheetrock. They're for some reason like three quarter inch MDF, all, all the walls here. So I guess that's why I couldn't find it. But I'm gonna fix that when I get the shop and my CNC going. I'm gonna build a really long plate that covers the light switches over on the right side across through the generator remote and then a little bit extra to cover up that hole that I made. As usual, all the design files and code will be on GitHub. You can find that in a link below that will get you to the Element 14 Presents website. And I'd love to hear what you think about this episode. So let me know at the Element 14 community, and I'll see you next time. Until then, keep making.